Right, shalom, shalom Rastafari. Greetings to the Beit Israel, the, the, the lost, once lost but now found Beit Israel, and all others who are seeking the truth, the half of the story that hasn't been told since now. And this is Ras Yadinos Tefari, this is Wendem Yadon of the line of Judah, society of his imperial majesty in the Americas, the Caribbean, and throughout the world, broadcasting on Rastafari Sabbatical, Sabbatical channel on the YouTubes, as well as Ethiopian World Net. And if that channel goes down, the haters, they, they, they are offended by the truth. But the truth is not a hot yat, it's not a sin. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Now, we've touched on this in, in, in the previous portion, and this particular art that you see on your, on your left-hand side, this particular um, looks like a, a wall painting, a portion of a wall painting that has been broken off. And it's one of the buried pieces of ancient Egyptian archaeology. You know, the whole Egyptology is being controlled by the Goyim or the Gentiles, our, our enemies, you understand, and, 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 the, and the ones whom the Lord, whom Yahweh has put us in their hands because of the disobedience of our ancestors. But here's the good news that he has given us in this generation, in this particular um, time and space, if we would recognize we're in the Sukkot um, particular um, Moedim of Yahweh Ha Elohim, and this is the this is the a high holy season for us. It's a season of recharging our spiritual batteries, as it were. Yovas, where but this this particular feast and festival is to be fulfilled in the promised land as the key festival Sukkot, right? Study it, my brothers and sisters. Study its its ancient significance. As we're looking right here at the ancient Israelites, right? A, a, a true uh, depiction of the ancient Israelites, the, the, the cultural as well as the racial type, basically black peoples, right? These are black peoples right here. And you also see right down here the so-called Red Sea or the Yam Suf, right? And you, you can see even um, what we have in the Bible with the soldiers out front, with the woman, you know, well-jeweled and modest apparel, with the men, you see they got their swords out, this, this brother right here is looking behind him, right? He's looking behind him, right? And you can see one carrying a, carrying a spear right here. You see the little ones. Even the little ones got jewelry on, all right? Remember what Exodus says. Now, people want to tell us that it's fiction, it's fake, because they know the truth of it. You understand? They know the truth. I mean, it's so fake, yet those who claim they are and have, have, have um, 99.9 less evidence to prove who they are, you know, then you see how you see how they got the world all all kind of sold up. But we recognize that the that the whole world has been deceived. You understand the whole world has been deceived. You overs, but yet here's the good news that we continue to find this evidence, and different brothers and sisters are broadcasting and uploading different portions and pieces. I mean, we just seen a video. We was watching a video over here. And this video over here was like, um, let's just get the name so those of y'all who, um, you know, watch this can, can check it out for yourself. This particular video is called Biblical Israelites Were Black, dot, and it says, and still are today. The Biblical um, Israelites Were Black, and we saw a couple other vids as well. And each one of them, you know, it was just beautiful to see more and more brothers and sisters doing their own homework, their own study. All right, now here's a frame that we still did on, um, and it asks the question, why did this Roman mistake Paul for an Egyptian? And the answer is because this is the type of man he saw. He saw a black man. I mean, these evidences are all over the place. If they had um, um, one-tenth of a percent this much evidence to prove, you understand, um, their lies as not being lies but true, they would use it. And we have evidence all over the place, and still you get um, 
you know, agent provocateurs and others, trolls and other folks to chime in or try to bait us, to debate us, and try to find out how much evidence or ammunition we have. But the main purpose of us putting these things out should be for the lost sheep, for those who are seeking. And as you're learning and growing and as you've been freely given, you're saying you also must share that with others. You understand? I mean, you must also be a part of this awakening. You see what I'm saying? Some call it a black awakening, but you've got to watch these terminologies out there for all this new age super, super imposition, all this antagonism to the Bible is happening for the precise reason that this is the prophetic season when these truths would be revealed, when these truths would come out. Now, the point that we wanted to make right here actually is not so much about this directly, you understand, but it's really about uh, a particular word or, 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 or undefined word. Now, we all know or we should know the book of Revelation, shouldn't we? Right, the book of Revelations in the Bible. Well, let's see if we can bring this up in the book of Revelations in the Bible. Let's see where we're at. Um, if we go to the book of Revelations in the Bible, let's see if we can open up another another window right here. Mm -hmm. Another window. I you know hey, hey is that is that window right? In the Hebrew, when you start to study the, you know, study the true Kabbalah. Now, Kabbalah, you know, don't get spooked down. Kabbalah means to receive. So if you read the New Testament, just for example, right, and it speaks about receiving Yeshua. So, so you can see even from this, um, from this presentation, it's like they are looking at the promised land. But now what the New Testament teaches us when we receive his righteousness is that Yeshua HaMoshiach is his right. Is, is his, he, he came to save his people from their chatiyat, from their missing of the mark, from their sin. That's the direct purpose of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, we often hear we came to save the whole world, but he came to save his people, right? And who are his people? His people are the, are the, are the ethnic, the, the, a particular seed people. That means they're of a particular um, racial and, and, and ethnic type. Now, some say, oh, this is being racist. No, this is being, this is being racially accurate, all right, because all this hell and misery and confusion that we have in the world is because of all these lies, right, all these lies. Ha Elohim had created Israel. He created this people, Israel. For what reason? He created this people, Israel, to be the light, right, to be the true Illuminati, you know, the true light, right, the true spiritual light for the Gentiles, for the Goyim, you understand, or the Anglo-European nations of today, right? Why? Because they... The Europeans, the Gentiles, the Goyim, right? The the, the the non the not the people who are not of that region. Let's understand this very carefully when we're studying world history, right? It's because they were walking, the Gentiles were walking in darkness spiritually. They were walking in spiritual darkness, right? They was worshiping idols, they was worshiping demons. They was worshiping snakes and other you know, other type of symbols that now here's the interesting thing. We see that Egypt, the black civilization, this is what a lot of the Egyptology folks don't recognize. Egypt, a black civilization, was also deceived. Mm -hmm. Not from its very beginning, but in its latter end. And what we see here with the Beta Israel coming out of Egypt is the ending of that dispensation. Now, the sign that was showed to Moses, we find to be very interesting, where he was told to put his hand in his bosom, and he took it out, and it turned white and leprous, white as snow, the Bible says. And then he put his hand into his bosom again, and what happened? It turned to his other flesh. So what other flesh could it be? That's the part that in the Charleston Heston on uh, Moses and Exodus movie, they didn't even they didn't include that. They didn't include that scene from the Bible. You understand, it was a long movie. They said they were biblically accurate, but they didn't include that scene. Because look how foolish that would have been if they did. 
Moses or Charleston Heston playing Moses, playing, right, playing Moses, pulling his hand out and it's white and leprous. They put it in and pull it out and turns to white. You know, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? So, see, some of these things are just logical, all right, and a lot of folks are just being illogical. You know what I'm saying? Or as the Bible says, they've been taken captive by the devil, by the liar, by the diabolical one. You know what I'm saying? Captive, spiritually captive. And this is a part of the one of you know, part of the fifty eight or so curses that we find in scripture that identifies and helps us to identify biblical Israel. So we have the art and the facts. All right, from from the ancient times, right, and also from the early from the early church, right. The early church is almost universally the early Christian church is almost universally agreed upon that the earliest images of the Israelites as well as of that are, that are taken to be of Yeshua HaMoshiach are of black Ethiopian types. All right, and this is very important because Amos nine and nine and seven says, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians? Now, remember, this is on the, the black dot. I want to talk about the black dot. But in order for you to understand the black dot, right, and, and how Yeshua, he is the Savior. He came to save his people, Israel. And, and spiritually, he is the Savior of what? Our souls, Right, or our soul, the soul of Israel. Even the Quran calls Yeshua HaMoshiach the Ruhullahi, right? The Ruhullahi. Now, if you look at the Hebrew, it's Ruach. So, so the Ruh, right? The Ruh and the Ruh, and the Ruach is, is one and the same. But in the Hebrew, it means the spirit. Understand this? In the Hebrew, it means spirit. In Arabic, they tell us it means soul, but then nefesh means soul. So there's some confusion there among the modern-day Mohammedans because they're not the original um, Mohammedans. The original Mohammedans were from Ishmael, and they also were black peoples. And you can see the remnant of them in the Horn of Africa, Somalia, um, in Sudan, and in other parts. They identify themselves as being Arab, but we look at them and they look African or black. But they are speaking... Um, culturally, you know what I'm saying, in some sense, religiously. So we have to understand that as, right, we have to understand that as well. All right, so Israel's original purpose was what? The original biblical Israel, which we are the, the, the descendants of, right? We are the descendants of, speaking racially, speaking ethnically, speaking nationally. We are so-called Negroes. Blacks, coloreds, Latinos, Ladinos, you know, um, those of us in the Americas, in this North country. Now, take a note of Jeremiah chapter 23, because you'll see where it says that they will be delivered out of the North country, that no longer would they say, blessed be the Lord, right, or Yahweh live, Yahai, Yahai, who delivered and brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, because we're in another kind of Egypt. Now, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, it says they will go into Egypt by way of ships, right? And now we know that we came into this spiritual Egypt. Now, look at D.C., look at the history of America, look at the masonry, Freemasonry, the Europeans. All that is connected with a whitewash of Egypt, but in principle is Egypt. And look at Revelation. It speaks about spiritual Egypt, Right, where our Lord was crucified, where? In spiritual Egypt. How interesting is this? Did you, was Yeshua HaMoshiach, was he crucified in, quote, Egypt? But it doesn't say Egypt. It says spiritual Egypt. So in spirit, it's a type of Egypt. Now, we don't have all this ready right here, some of the pictures, but no doubt you've seen it and not to, you know, deal with the curse on that level. But you know the pictures of, of, of black men and even women and children being lynched, right? That's what you see here on the cross. You remember they rejected Yeshua HaMoshiach, and they said that we have no king, right, but Caesar. So here's why I say that, that, that Hashem, Baruch Hu, has, has a sense of humor. You understand that the Almighty has a sense of humor. If you don't want to believe me, then look at Psalm, Psalm 2. 
right? He says, the Lord laughs. In heaven, he laughs. He has his enemy in derision, all right? So he has a sense of humor. So they said, we have no king but Caesar. Now, how interesting would it be that we now have um, what they call a Caesar Borgias, right? You know the image. You know, we're not going to have to show you right here, but you know the image. Go look up Caesar, C-E-S-A-R, last name, B-O-R-G-I-A, or G-I-A-S. You know, we would show you a picture, but we showed it in, in countless other vids. All right, and we just want to focus on this because we want to touch on the God particle. What is this God particle they're talking about? If you, have, you, have you checked it out? Have you, you know, checked out a couple of vids or done a little bit of research on this black, I mean, this, this um, um, God particle? Because back in the 60s, they say that is God dead? All right, in the conspiracy against the elect of God, the true king of Israel, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, while we were going down into spiritual Egypt with Martin Lucifer King, right, while we were going down into that, being led by a false light, you understand, down into Egypt, the very thing that the prophets told the Beit Israel when there was an opportunity for them to come out, not to turn to Egypt, but they turned to Egypt. So Egypt today would be like D.C. All right, now, these people here, right, the Beit Israel are coming out. Then what season is the Passover, Fasica. Now, how interesting this coming out to enter the promised land is connected with this Passover, right, this Passover. So we had a crossing over here in heaven, right, as above, so below. Now we have a crossing here. We have the people coming out and their, their captors, right, or the soldiers, you know, saying, drowning in the Red Sea. And here at the foot of the cross, we have the skull and the bones, and the place was called Golgotha, right? Now, now I want you to understand that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, right? There was a, there, there was a sealing up of the vision. But now in the New Testament time, because we're coming into that time and we're in that time and dispensation, that's why there's so much information going to and fro, like Donnell says, like Donnell says. But our enemy thinks that they're wiser than Daniel. You understand? They think they're wiser than Daniel. But our Moshiach, he says, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. You understand? doesn't mean we don't have the two-edged sword in our hand, but there's a certain spiritual character. You see, the Israelites of Yeshua's time, they wanted a more Herodian type. They wanted a counterpart to the Edomite Herod. Remember, Herod was not, was not a Judahite. Herod was more linked with this modern-day Jewish people. And you understand when you understand the true racial, ethnic, tribal link, right? Then he was, you understand, to the true base of Israel. But let's, let's continue here. Because you need to understand this as a background to understand what the God particle is mm -hmm. and what the connection is to the Ethiopian, all right, or to Yeshua HaMoshiach as an Ethiopian. Now, even the name Ethiopia is very important. They tell us that it's from Greek. This is what they tell us. But we're going to do a little bit of study on our own and, 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 and hopefully demonstrate this to you, and you'll find out for yourself whether that is really the truth or that's just what they have told us. You remember when they told us that the Egyptians wasn't black people based on the, the Hollywood Egyptians and, the, and that Jesus wasn't black, Yeshua, really more importantly, or Jesus, if you must say it with the J, which was invented by the Jesuits, and Yeshua said that many will come in my name. What's, what's his name? Right? His name is Jesus, so we get an organization, the Jesuits. You know, so all these things are, are fulfilled, and they're coming out from the same place that destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D. They're coming out from, from Rome, from this, from this mystery. There's two mysteries, right? So Israel's purpose at first, from the very first, was to be a nation of the priesthood. As we read in Revelation, there's something very interesting. In, in the Moshiach Yeshua, we become, through his blood, right, through his sacrifice, really through his both psychic and genetic 
salvation, if we receive it in our main, if we receive it in the hymenot, if we receive it in, 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 in the spirit and the truth. Now, the truth is he's black, right? The truth is he's Ethiopian. He's born of us. His mother is one of us, the black Madonna. It is in Gamaria. You understand? But now, what is the spiritual aspect? This is where the metanoia, this is where the change of mind has to occur so that that melanin, which is that God particle, that's what they're looking for. You understand? I mean, they, they already have isolated it on the flesh level, but now they're trying to find it on the rekik, uh, the mindano, the uh, more subtle, the more the spiritual level. The, you know, they, they are, we only see a limited band. You, you're right. There's a full spectrum. When you look at the seven colors of the rainbow when refracted through the prism or through the trinity, all right, now I would advise ones to check out the so-called Jewish Trinity, a very good book, actually. The, the name, don't let the name throw you, but how it proves when the rabbis, the real rabbis, when they believed in the Trinity, the real Trinity, you know what I'm saying? And there's something interesting, too, because in the old Hebrew, um, in, in the law, the Torah, there are the, the three pilgrim festivals called the Shilos Regalim. Right, the Shilos Regalim, and it's a very, very interesting connection there. But Israel's right true purpose, let's say the true Israel's purpose, let's say Black Israel or Black Beta Israel to qualify it in this modern confusion. Its true purpose, right, at first was to bring light, mm -hmm. the light of the true God, the true Creator of heaven and earth and all that is therein, right, to the heathens, right, to the goyim, right, to all other nations. We were to be his son. Remember, Israel was his son. He said, I called, um, uh, I called my son out of Egypt, his son. So the whole nation was a corporate, right, a corporate man. So now today they talk about corporation and corporate law. What they have done is what the devil does. The devil steals from God, right, steals from the true God. You know, they want to be like God, right, um, and applies it for his own purposes. So now in law they have like how a corporation can be like a person, right? It's not a corporation in the old sense of the, the Western law, but now it's more like the New Testament where it's a person. So this whole people, right, we see a bunch of people over here, but this whole people is as his son. Remember, this is Old Testament. The Old Testament says, what is his name and what is his son's name? All right? What is his son's name? Because there's still some of our Israelites and Hebrews who reject the New Testament because they're still caught up on Caesar Borgia's and, and the Caesar Borgia's spirit, um, false counterfeit, counterfeit zeitgeist or poltergeist, the poltergeist of Caesar Borgia's, the false ghost, right, the false doctrine. But Israel's purpose was to bring light to the, the Goyim concerning the one true God, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad. We sort of bring that knowledge of the one true God. And then finally, the Messiah, the Moshiach, called Christos, right, the anointed, would come to bring light or illumination to the world, right? Thus, there are two mysteries. Mm -hmm. There are two mysteries which are in operation, right? And we need to understand that, and then we can learn what the modus operandi, what their method of operation is. The first one is namely the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness, the mystery of rebellion, right? as it concerns God, as it concerns the Messiah, and as it concerns his people. So we see that they have um, presented a counterfeit imposter Christ image in the whitewash, right? We see that they have presented a false God as a father, even in the Vatican, you know, the, the half-naked guy pointing his finger at the, at the other half-naked small penis guy, right? And that's supposed to be Adam and all that. So that's a lie. Right, and we're going to touch on that as we move forward. So that's a part of the mystery of iniquity. But now, also the people. So we see this trinity, the Father, the Son, and the people. 
right? The father, so we know they've lied about God the Father. That's why most people think that Santa Claus is Jesus' father, but they don't say it out loud. You know what I'm saying? But you, 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 you just have to put it together. A child puts it together, but it's like the unsaid, the unsaid um, blasphemy, right? The whole Santa Claus, right, thing, right? And the only black they put there, they used to be Black Peter, but now they make him the reindeer, all right? And so that's why he's brown, right? Just similar to the color of, of the true Israelites and the true Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, that's the first mystery, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness concerning the man of sin. Mm -hmm. And that's the counterfeit Hollywood Jesus, right? And sees the Borgias. They've now made Caesar Borgias talk in the Hollywood movies, right? That's what Revelation says. So there's the mystery of iniquity, and then there's the mystery of righteousness, or the mystery of God in Christ, the mystery of his righteousness, because um, Shaul or Huadio Paulos, he says that, um, that, that the Israelites had a zeal of his time, of Christ's time, of the Moshiach's time, had a zeal for God, right? But that they were ignorant, right? They were ignorant, right? They were ignorant, it says right here, that for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, of Ha Elohim. And, and this is from uh, Romans chapter 10. That was verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 3, all right? Um, and some of the documentaries that, that's on this kind of loop with this documentary here touches on that, right? Now, both of these mysteries, right? So it's like the mystery of... Of, of the evildoers, iniquity, the lawlessness that we see so rampant nowadays. And this, remember, it's the end of the Gentile times, because the times of the Gentiles, right, um, the Anglo-Europeans is coming to its fulfillment. That's why nothing, nothing will work. Like Rastafari say, nothing will work in Babylon. It's like nothing, everything doesn't, everything is breaking down, right? And the mystery of righteousness, right, right, the mystery of righteousness, right, um, now, both of them, right, they function through time. They function in a, in, 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 in a preset time, right? Even Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, him being born, right, Christ being born, the son, the Bain Ha Elohim being born, right, because his birth is necessary for the birth of the, of the, of the multitude of brethren, of I and I, in, truth, in, in spirit and in truth, fulfilling Hashem's righteousness, Ha Elohim's righteousness, Yahweh, Baruchu, right? His um, his his righteousness, right? Um, but they began. This actually began way back when. They even found recent the book of um, not found, but you know, for them they so called discovered it in Ethiopia, all right? Which which connects a lot, much more of the dots. And the interesting thing about the Ethiopic book or the book of Enoch, the real book of Enoch, right, um, is that um, the New Testament writers obviously quoted from it. Now they find and they compare the text and they see that. So this, this was all known. So there's much that has been um, preserved, right, in, in, in the secret place of, we could say, the, the, the Most High, all right? Um, so these began actually in the realm of e eternity, right? Now, Romans chapter 16, verse 25, and uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 7. Now, ones will still ask, okay, that's good, but what does that have to do with the God particle? Because if we put that name up there, somebody's going to watch this for the, for the God particle. All right, so let us begin with this right here. Now that we have this over here, let's... Okay, this is another type of cross, if you if you if you can see it right there, right, right. Remember, he says, "This day I put before you blessings and curses. Choose you this day, right." And uh, unfortunately, our people chose, and this is what they got, right. And this is where we're at. And maybe one of the ships was called the USS Jesus too. Um, how ironic is that? All right, so. Um, Remember Yeshua HaMashiach said, Behold my hands and, 
and and my side, right? Now over here, let's touch on this right here. Now I, I didn't really know where I would begin this off on, but um, I think this makes a, a kind of an interesting case right here. Let us um, okay. So you see this right here, right? Now this is Europe, right? Europe and the USA, right? Or we could say mother and daughter, right? It could be Britain too, but you know, Europe, Europe, right? And the USA, right? Or remember, Europe basically is ruled by Rome, right? Remember the Roman Empire. Remember Jerusalem, all right? Um, remember the crucifixion, okay? The lynching, right? Now. This right here is a particle accelerator. They call this a particle accelerator. It looks like something out of one of these sci-fi movies, right? A particle accelerator, right? So this is the large um, um, hadron, it's not like hadrian, right? Collider in Geneva, Switzerland. Remember what happened during World War II in Geneva, Switzerland, the League of Nations that came against the Lion of Judah? You know, I mean, the black line, the real biblical, that have, that have um, thousands of years of evidence that proves who they are, all right? And still it's hard for um, Reverend Bacon and Pastor Pork Chops, right, um, to teach that to the people, all right? Because, like I said, it's the, it's, it's, it's the shepherds, right, these false shepherds up in the bull pit giving the people bull from week to week, having them break God's laws. Now, this is the image that most people take of um, Adam and Eve, right? This is false. This is the counterfeit, all right? This is the counterfeit right here. So we have so-called creationist museums. So I think the point they're trying to make is that the Europeans are dealing with science and Americans are still dealing with um, whitewashed religion, you know, because even some of them even recognize, you, you know, saying the truth concerning um, um, Ethiopia, you know, is when we start to study certain things, more so. You, you, they, don't, they don't wrestle the fact like uh, mother and daughter, like uh, uh, Britain, right, and uh, America. Britain, in that sense, would be that commercial, political Babylon, and, and the daughter would be like America, all right? The daughter of Tyre now would be like the Queen of England. We've touched on that in other videos. Now, the reason why I bring this up right here is that this is what they're using to try to find this. They call it a Higgs boson. Now, I don't have the time or opportunity right here to explain Higgs boson, you know, as we study the etymology. But Higgs in Ethiopic means law, as when we say Torah, right, the Higgs. And then boson is like the second part of Kana boson. Now, Kana boson means like sweet star. Right, you know, sweet, a balsam. So if we look at the sweet law, I mean, just, just a rough translation of it, right, just on a certain level. But it was actually something in Revelation, right, that reveals the truth about this God particle. Let's see if we can bring this up right here. You know the part where they call it Alpha and Omega? You know, Alpha and Omega, they say that, well, um, well, Jesus said in, in, in Revelation, I am the Alpha and the Omega, right? I am the beginning and the end. Now, many have said one thing he didn't say was Alpha and Omega since he spoke Hebrew, right? Since he spoke Hebrew, some say Ar Aramaic, and that's another level there too because now they're trying to link Aramaic with Yiddish, you know, in order to give them. See, the thing about Aramaic, Aramaic was like, um, was like the slang. You know what I mean? It was like the slang of its time. So it had a lot of, you know, um, uh, other words in there. While biblical Hebrew was, was more rarely spoken by the popular people. It's like comparing Gutters, right, in, in Ethiopia with with Amharic on a certain level, or the royal Amharic of His Majesty's Bible, with um, the modern Amharic spoken by the, the present careless generation, right? So let's go right here, and we see right here, front and center, right? We see where Revelation 1 and 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now we have a, 
a Hebrew um, New Testament. It's a pretty good translation, actually, from our study of it, but a Hebrew New Testament, right? And um, let us go to Revelation um, for those who, who know their, their Aleph Beit, right? If you know your Aleph Beit, see, the Greeks, they took it. This is what you have to understand. The Greeks, they, they took the Aleph Beit, right? Um, and then they called it Alpha Beit. Right, they took it and they also like changed it, right? And, and remember that Greek back in that day, in that time, it was the trade language. Now I want you to keep that in mind: the trade language, right? The Greek was the trade language, like English today can be considered like the trade or the merchant, right? The merchant language, right? Keep that in mind when, when um, hopefully we'll post a vid on the Canaanite. You know, the Canaanite, dispelling this Canaanite lie, what they're doing by having, like, dark-skinned and black peoples and Ethiopian-ish peoples, you know, say, I'm a Canaanite, I'm a Canaanite, blah, 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 on these vids. And we're going to show you scriptural proof, and we can get into historical proof. And, and, and um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of proof there, but we're going to deal with that. But just keep that in mind right there. Greek was the trade language. Now, here... Let's see if we can highlight this so when we bring this to the camera, you can, uh, you can better see this, where it says the Alpha and Omega. Now, it was translated, right? This was translated. Many who have studied this have recognized that it was, um, it was translated, right? Um, it was translated into... Uh, you know, into um, Greek, right? Almost like, yeah, it was translated into Greek. Like even when we're studying with them hard, we have to translate it for most into English. And then ones can even pick it up in English and then translate to the various different, the Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters. And we have the Haitian and French, Creole-speaking, and others in different parts have different dialects. So the trade language would be the English, you know, understand? even though we might be originally taking it from the Royal Amharic or the Ge'ez, the Afro-Shemitic root languages. So here you see it says Alpha and Omega, right, based on the Greek. Now we're going to show you right here, right, let us show you this right here. Where's the pointer? Okay, here we go right here. You see this right here? Right, this right here says Ani, I should have highlighted this right here, but says Ani Ha Aleph Wa or they'll say Ve Va but really Wa Ani Ha Tau. They'll say Tav. Right? The Ashkenazis they teach people to say that. They say they say Jehovah. That's from the Germanic. They say um Yahweh, right? But it's not a V, it's the Ashkenazis right, that say it that way because of their speech patterns, right? We can even say because of a speech impediment, they cannot say it like that because really they're not the people, all right? And it's evident because they have a Germanic language, right? And the Germans are of a different stock, all right? They're not of a Shemitic stock, all right? They're more of a, a Edomo, Kaneo, um um, stock, not even a Japhetite stock. Many think that, well, they're Japhetic because they're going to the Ham, Shem, and Japheth um, myth that the same Jews really made that up themselves, all right? You know, that Ham, Shem, and Japheth. So you have a lot of ones who are arguing, you're a Shemite, you're a Hamite, and then what would you say to Moses' children? What would you say to Joseph's children? And, and remember what Lord did to, what Yahweh did to Miriam because of such a thing. Now, let's just click on this right here. Let's click on um, Revelation 1 and 8, right? And this is the, the Blue Letter Bible. It's, it's kind of an excellent uh, search right here. And then we're going to click on the C right here, right, the C. And then it's going to bring up the Greek, right, the Greek right here, right? And you can see this right here, okay? It says ego, right, ego, which means I, right, Amy. Right, Amy, I am, Ego Amy, Alpha, Chi, all, Chi, all. So in the Greek, 
right? In the Greek, you see what it says. It says, ego, amy, alpha, chi, o. Alpha, chi, o, right? Now, is that what Yeshua HaMoshiach said? Right? Did he, did he say that? Is that how the, his Hebrew or Judahite um, disciples would have understood it? No. See, we see this once again right here. What's highlighted? Ani, right? Ha alef, wa ani, ha tau. So he says ha alef, the alef, and the tau. Now that would be the alef tau. They would say alef alef tav, right? In the Ashkenazi pronunciation. Now, why is this important, right? Well, this is important for a couple of um, reasons. Now we have to look at et. Right, which is E-T, right? Et is E-T, right, in the Hebrew. So it's very important for us to look, look, look this up. So um, let's open another window right here, right? Let's open another window. You can see this right here. So we already have this, right? If we have the, the A, the Aleph, right? Because remember, the letter itself is the name, right? The letter itself is the name. So this is, this is Aleph, this is Tau. They will tell you Aleph Tav. But when you add that V there, you are bowing to the Ashkenazi, right? The so called, um, some say imposter Jews. But we look at what the scripture says, all right? And we look at the fruit, Yovas, and we look at the truth, you right? So we're not going to follow them, but we go to our Ethiopic root, the true Afro Shemitic root. And as we get into this, you're going to see also um, where the translators even acknowledge that for themselves, right? Um, so we have Aleph Tav. Now here they have ETH. Now if you look up on the internet as an abbreviation, you often find the abbreviation of Ethiopia as ETH, right? That's ET. Like we say ET. So a lot of folks are probably going to click on this and think like, oh, you're going to talk about ETs and the God particle. Yeah, we're going to find out about this. That's why they're trying to sell people a lie of a utopia. Notice that? A utopia. You understand? And that's why they suppress the truth of Ethiopia. Now, look at the pronunciation. The pronunciation over here is at. Well, they put a TH there because, once again, the Ashkenazis make this a TH. It's really a T sound. This is Tav, right? This right here would be, if you study the, the symbology of the Hebrew letters, this would be the sacrificial, right? The sacrificial ox or bull, right? And this would be the cross. So we have the sacrificial bull and we have the cross. You know, and to those who understand um, how it comes out of the mishtir or the mysteries or, or the wisdom that Moses was learned in. Remember, it's Moses that wrote this. And we're going to touch on the primary... Um, the primary verses. So this is a particle. This is called a particle. That means it's not really a word they say, but it's a part of speech, right? And they say it's apparently, not saying it is, but from their own root word etymology, right, suppressing the Ethiopic, which gives us the hidden keys, apparently contracted from oat or oat, which is the H22-6 in the demonstrative sense of entity. Now, I want you to keep this in mind right here. In the demonstrative sense of entity, all right, an entity, right, an entity. Like when we say Yahweh, it does not mean he who, it, it does not mean I am that I am. That's Ehye, Asha Ehye, right, Ehye, Ehye, Asha Ehye, right. But when we say Yahweh, Yah, and contract it to Yahweh, it means he who was, he who is, he who will be. And this is just how Revelation reads. If you read it, there's a blessing even in just reading it. Don't just read it trying to figure out, well, who's the Antichrist or whatever like that, but read it just to get, it, you know, just to get that word, you know, deposit that word within your soul, right? There's a blessing. It says so from the very beginning of the book. So we have E-T, really A-T or E-T, right? Um, a more correct would probably be, if you, if you transliterate it more correct, would be uh, A-E-T, right, or A-E-T-H, like Ethiopia, all right? Now, it means entity, right? Now, here in the outline of biblical usage, 
right? It says uh, a sign of the definite direct object. Now, I don't know how many of you all understand this, but there's like certain markers you put on the word. So it's, it tells the, the reader that the verb is, is not on this word, which is a noun, but it's on another noun or other noun. So it basically directs the force of the verb to which particular noun you're speaking about. It says it's not translated in English. So if you're looking at the English Bible, unless you're really studying to show yourself approved, you're never going to come across this, right, not translated in English, but generally preceding and indicating the accusative. The accusative sounds awfully judgmental, right? It says it's preceding and it's indicating the accusative. Now look down here, authorized, authorized version, right? The translation count, notice this. Remember the digital level of the universe, right? 22, right? Aleph to Tav, the Hebrew alphabet, the biblical Hebrew alphabet has 22 um, fidelat or 22 um, letters. You notice that? So Aleph and Tav, right? Or Aleph and Tau. Aleph, Tau. A, Ta. Right, right. Now, overstand this right here. It's 22, 22 times. But notice what the AV says right here. It says that it is not translated, right? So this is not even translating your Bible. It's there in the Hebrew, but they don't translate it. See, the synagogue knows what's going on, but your churches don't know what's going on, right? And your pastors give you a song and a dance, and then you come back like, you know, six days later, for more of a song and a dance, and they never even tell you, black people, that you're the once lost but now found Beta Israel, who you are, you understand, where you're from, and how you, and how you got here. In other words, let's take this off so we understand the particle accelerator, right? Um, or at least we, we made, made that reference right there. Now, why are they trying to find the God particle? Right? What, what's all this fuss to find the God particle? Because they recognize that now, at this present time, in order to stop the rise of the black Messiah, they're going to have to go to another level. Right? They have to go to a higher level. You know, because your melanin is about to get active. In other words, they fear that your melanin is about to go super luminal. You know what I'm saying? What do we mean by superluminal? Well, read Yeshua HaMoshiach. Read about how after the crucifixion, where it's like, where it's like he walked through walls, right? You know, where, where he says, and he gives a hint, you know, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he gives a hint, right, when he says that uh, flesh, and, um, flesh and bones, right, he speaks about flesh and bones. Right, like they, they think he's a spirit when he comes upon them suddenly, like they're in a closed area, and he walks in, and and they, and, and they you know, they, they think he's a ghost, right, or, or not a ghost, but a spirit, you know what I'm saying? And he says that um, spirit does not have flesh and bone. Now, an interesting thing that some of us have noticed is that he doesn't say flesh and blood. And then when you look in the beginning with Adam, where Haywan, Adam and Eve, you'll see that when Eve was made, he said, this is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say there was blood of my blood. Remember, it wasn't a blood transfusion that was given to make Eve. You know, over the blood is not there, or the blood is not mentioned. So I've been asking you know, the Holy Spirit, this question, that since I heard others also ask and approach it from different points of view, and this is concerning where does the soul, if you understand what the soul is and the spirit, where does it connect with the flesh, right? At what point does the soul, right, and the spirit connect with our flesh? There must be some sort of connection. You know what I'm saying? There must be some sort of connection. Then it began to, you know, become clear that is the blood. It is through the blood. Now, now the post-resurrected, um, you see, you have to understand the power that Yeshua showed. And this is why they had to suppress the early first two, three centuries of Christians, 
You understand? And many of them were even Gentiles were recognizing this truth because Israel began to fulfill its primary objective. That, that is to be a nation of the priesthood with Yeshua HaMoshiach as the high priest. Remember, it says that we have a high priest. The book of Hebrews is really the gospel for us to really understand Christ. But we have to understand it as Hebrews. Right? We have to understand it as, as Hebrews. There's no other way to understand it. You can't be a, be a, a Hebrew calling yourself a Gentile and, and, and the other people are, are Jews. You understand? Even though the Bible says they are not, but then you avoid revelation because it shows they don't have any revelation. You know, but even there we see them creeping in. You know what I'm saying? But the time is too late. You know what I'm saying? Because it is written. So, with that being said, let us go forward right here. I wanted to show you this right here. So Christ, he demonstrated that power over death. Remember, death is the last enemy to be destroyed, right? Over, over um, the grave, right? The, the stone was rolled and only the garments was found there. And over hell. And in the Gospel of Nicodemus, in the um, lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of Eden, that's where they suppress that particular part that we have in the gospel where it talk about who shall go up to heaven to bring Christ down or go down into the lower depths to bring him up. You understand? And it speaks about how he um, um, held captivity captive, you understand, and presented gifts, spiritual gifts, right, to men who would receive him as that high priest of their confession. So Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is that high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And that connects with Psalm 110 as well. There's other gems within there. But let's go forward on the, on the Et, right? The Et and the Ethiopian or the Ethiopian, right? Could we say Ethiopia in, in the language of Ethiopia? But there's a lie that has been circulating that Ethiopia comes from the Greek, Right? Yeah, it comes from the Greek. Now, you have to understand what Greek was. Greek was a trade language. It was the merchant language. It was the language of the Canaanites that already being displaced had found a new nationality and a new business and a new trade. Later on, they would find another trade, and that would be in the lost sheep of the Bay to Israel in the Trans-Ethiopic Ocean, originally, now called pseudonymously the transatlantic but before it was called the atlantic and south atlantic it was called the ethiopic ocean you can go look that up now so this word here et which which is symbolic of alpha right alef and tau alef and tau right alef and tau now if we click on this right here before we click on the Jesenius's lexicon Right, before we, we click on that. Now remember.